Hi, my name is Tim and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be taking an introductory look at macros within SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS already has a lot of capabilities built into the program, and macros are just another way of taking advantage of this and possibly automating some tasks. In our example today, what we're going to do is we're going to write a macro that creates a 100 millimeter cube. First, before we actually get started with our macros, we want to set up our toolbar so that we have the macro tools available to us. I'm going to create a new tab and call it Macros. And on my Macros tab, I'm going to go into the Commands and Macros and just drag off all these buttons here. I have the Run Macro button, Stop, the Record, New Macro, and Edit Macro. This last button is actually a macro button that is going to be assigned to the specific macro that is on your computer. We'll be using this at the end of the video. Now that I've created my tabs and have all the tools available to us, we're ready to record this. When you're recording macros, you want actually want to do as few clicks as possible to do this because each click will be recorded and it'll be more work to clean up later in the code. So I'm going to hit record macro and I'm going to start to draw my cube. So I'm going to draw on the front plane here with a center rectangle. And in this case, I don't actually care about the dimensions of this rectangle at the moment. We're actually going to fix it later in this code. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to use the fully defined sketch tool and fully define this sketch like so. Once we're done this, we're going to go into our features and extrude this 100 millimeters mid plane. Now that I'm done my entire macro here, I'm just going to press stop macro and you'll see that a window comes up for this. I'm going to save this as macro one. And now we're ready to edit our macro. So the macro is generated in Visual Basic for Application or VBA uh, for short and this is what we're going to be editing to create our code. So. Uh, currently, we have things such as dim uh, SW app as object, dim part as object. Um, these objects, we actually have a little bit of tricks for these. We can actually rename these instead of object. We can name these specific types of objects. And that'll enable something called IntelliSense for us inside our application. So currently, when you see application.solidworks, if I type application, dot SOLIDWORKS, you'll see that this list comes up. This is called IntelliSense. And this IntelliSense is what allows us to find functions very, very easily. In this case, we'd like to do that for the part as well. So, for example, if I to say part, you'll see that nothing comes up. The reason is because the part is right now just as an object. Same thing with SW app. Uh, the trick to this is that we can actually rename, instead of object, we're going to name this sldworks.sldworks. And for part, we're going to name this sldworks.modeldoc2. And so now, if I go into part, you'll see that my functions will come up in a list like so. And this will make it very, very easy to find our functions. So this is something that's good to do every time that you're recording a macro. So it's now time to clean up some of the code. Um, any of these things that you see here that say part clear selections, these are just your mouse clicks clearing selections and we don't really need any of these so we can actually get rid of all of these. So I'm just going to delete these lines of code out. Uh, this pick mode, same thing, it is uh, the same idea, it's actually just picking different things here so we don't need that either. And we can get rid of the clear selections. Uh, we'll leave the trimetric view up. Okay, so going through our functions here, we have something, uh, for example, part extension, and this is the creation of the front plane, uh, and this is the creation of the actual center rectangle. So in this case, the center rectangle, this is where I'm going to change my dimensions of my rectangle. So I wanted this to be uh, 100 millimeters, so I'm going to make this 0 0.05, and this is also going to be 0 0.05. Uh, if we take a look at this, I go part sketch manager.
and we look at the center rectangle. When I make this bracket, you'll see that it says x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, and z2. And these are the parameters for which you want this function to operate on. And so for the z value, since we're just drawing on the front plane, those are both 0. And then x1 and y1 is the center point of the rectangle, and the x2 and y2 is the outer point of the rectangle. So in order to make this 100 millimeters, we're using 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. By default, this is in meters. So once we've done that, uh, after that point, we did the fully defined sketch. So we have the fully defined sketch here, and that's fine. It's just going to fully define it as the 100 millimeters that we wanted here. And for this one here, for my feature, this is the actual extrusion. Uh, this object here, same thing, we actually have a trick for this. Instead of the uh, object, we can do sldworks.feature. And that'll allow us to have the IntelliSense for the feature as well. Uh, in this case, this is a pretty long feature, but this is basically the extrusion, and this includes all of your different parameters, such as your size of the, of the extrusion, uh, whether or not it's mid-plane, and so on. So that's why there are so many variables. Uh, we're just going to leave this alone at this point because it's doing what we'd like. So once we're done all of this, we can just save this code here. So we're going to save it. And I'm just going to close this out. And I'm going to start a new part here. And I'm going to run the macro. And so you can see that we've now created a very simple block. It's important to note that this macro can be written and done in a couple ways. So for example, because I recorded this after I had already created a new part and drawn just the sketches for this, it draws this cube inside of this part file. So if I run this macro again, it would just draw another cube directly on top of this cube. Uh, another example of this is if I had actually recorded the entire step process of myself creating a new part and then inserting all of these things, it would actually create a new part each and every time. If I take a look at one of the macros I've done previously, you can see this, where it says set the part to this, and this is the part uh, template that it's going to use, and that sets it to an active document. So if I run this one, it actually creates a new part each time. So the last thing I want to do is I would like to actually assign this macro to a button. So I'm going to go back into my Customize Manager, my Commands, and for macro I'm going to drag out that last button here. And for this macro I'm going to attach it to macro1, and for our tooltip we can call it Draw Cube. And so what we're going to do is every time we create a new file like so. I can hit draw a cube and it'll draw a cube for me. So in today's video we covered how to record macros and edit the code. For more useful videos like this, subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems channel and be sure to check out the next part in the programming and macro video series. Thank you for watching.